What industry is a lot shadier than it seems? My dad knows a story from someone who works for a nationwide grocery chain. They have to deal with an Italian mafia to import balsamic vine gar. More people died last year over vanilla in Madagascar than cocaine in South America. They've even coined the term vanilla murder. Farmers hire armed mercenaries to guard their crops from thieves near harvest time, and if one is caught. Well, let's just say it's in response to all the farmers that were killed by thieves for the same reason. This article is a fairly light read on the subject without anything too graphic. But there's a great deal of information about it floating around, along with some pretty disturbing accounts. The maritime industry. Most of the big companies do things by the book and treat crews well because they are afraid of lawsuits and unions, but many smaller mom and pop companies break laws and violate safety regulations with reckless abandon because they are not as visible and can stay under the radar so to speak. It's very common for a small company to ask a captain slash crew to do something illegal and dangerous in order to increase profit and for the captain slash crew to comply out of fear of losing their jobs. And that's just the US maritime industry, sailors from poorer nations who work on ships are often fed little more than rice and cheap ramen for months at a time and paid pennies for their back breaking work. I love running tugs for a living. But the industry as a whole is rife with shady business. Rating services like Yelp refuse to advertise and your good reviews magically get rearranged. Hey, look if you want to do that and be transparent, I get it. But most every business owner knows how scummy this is and most clients just have no idea. I have a business that isn't something that would usually be looked for on Yelp. They called and I just froze. Luckily I do long term rentals and was sold out. Explained I wouldn't have an opening for months. They seemed to leave me alone. Yet they have my business on the front page of Google search under the wrong category. Dietary supplements. It's gotten better but there's still a lot of half truths and whole lies. Not all that long ago it was seriously like the wild wild west. All industries are shadier than they seem. I used to work for a flute manufacturer and it was shady as hell. Eyeglasses. You have no idea the snow job they put most people through when it comes to buying them. It's far, far worse than trying to buy a new car from a dealership. Wholesale frames are about $5-20. Wholesale lens blanks are another $10. Any kind of dip coating of Tinting, etc., is negligible cost and effort to apply, literally pennies. To top it off, they don't even do a whole lot in-house, but send it to labs which are basically sweet shops, that can take up to 2-3 to three weeks when labor time is literally under 5 minutes. Instead of training real opticians and technicians, they are just glorified sales staff now. Most of the time they don't even bother with proper measurement for PD frame width, or arm fitting. Was an optician in the early 90s. I'm horrified at what the business has become. Cruise ships. I was told I was having a minimum of one day off every week and work normal hours, 8, 10 h slash day, with a good pay and good prepaid tips. I ended up working 30 days in a row, who will over 400 hours, for $1,600 with tips included. This company I was working for was called Scenic Cruises, ship was called Manuscript Scenic Crystal, which was an Australian company working over a Swiss company going under a Maltese flag, sailing in Central Europe. That's how I understood it anyways, they deliberately did this, so they could break international laws, I counted at least 5 that they broke. Biggest scam company I ever worked for, I resigned after my first month. The police boarded the ship every once in a while because they knew this, but they couldn't do shit because they had no jurisdiction over the ship. I was forced to work with a 39 Celsius fever. I really wanna fuck this company up, but I literally have no idea how. And hiring an international lawyer or whatever is too expensive. Edit, if anyone knows how please contact me. Trucking. The margins are razor thin, and so everyone is trying to nickel and dime each other constantly. 
The drivers lie to their dispatchers. The dispatchers lie to the brokers. The brokers lie to the clients. All of this for like dollar sign 50 dash 100 sometimes. Recruitment industry. Some examples. Fake jobs to lure candidates for registration kpis. Trainee negotiation tactics of telling a candidate there is a better candidate who wants less, so we recommend less for you to get the job especially for contractors. Backquote coveting off pitching and telling a candidate they have been sent to a line manager, but in reality they haven't been submitted, because two others from same recruiter have already been in interviews. If they fail you may get a chance. Lot of coded ways to put on a database info on your age, non-professional related appearance, and ethnicity. Ageism, sexism, racism is rampant in hiring. A lot more dodgy stuff behind the scenes. Source was involved with the industry on a global level for over 15 years before I changed careers. Avocado farms. Most of the farms in Central America are taken over by the cartel because of how much money is in selling avocados. Pet industry. Basement puppy mills and dogs that are so inbred they can hardly breath. There are plenty of ethical breeders out there, and some unlicensed breeders are ethical, even if in a legal grey zone, but the conditions of some of the so-called puppy mills can be really bad. Sometimes when breeds are mixed, and the pup gets the recessive genes the breeders weren't looking for, they straight up euthanize it, because they know it won't sell. Not to mention how many purebreds are actually not pure at all, and sold as is. Shady. CBD, lot of predatory companies making sub for products with questionable raw materials, and then marking it way the fuck up, and selling it as a miracle cure to vulnerable and ill-educated consumers. Usually have a high power legal team on deck, but pay their workers shit and no benefits. Edit, because so many people are asking, while I used to be in sales in the industry, and have my own opinions about who's good out there, it's a woefully short list, you'll probably have your best luck checking out the top recommendations at r slash cbd, they have a whole pinned post about best companies that they've, hopefully, vetted well. Does the beauty industry have a problem with child labor? I remember watching a thing, where a journalist goes to India. To see the mines where children mine some sort of mineral to make bronzer. Edit, the mineral is mica and someone pointed out the video where I remember this from. Link. Mattress industry. Specifically, mattress firm. This will probably get buried, but glitter. A manager of one of the biggest glitter manufacturers, Glitux, said in a 2018 interview that most of the glitter they make goes to one buyer for a single industrial use. When asked who the buyer was, and why they need so much glitter, she said oh, I definitely can't disclose that. When asked why, she said because they don't want anybody to know it's glitter. Ever since this interview people have been trying to guess what company or industry secretly uses most of the world's glitter, and why they want to keep that use under wraps. A link to the interview. What industry isn't? Jewelry slash gems slash diamonds is pretty dark. Eyewear. Luke Sotica owns a large majority of eyewear and holds a virtual monopoly on the market. They control all prices and will crush competition. The only reason eyeglasses and sunglasses are so expensive is because of price gouging. Scholarly journals. The actual research is usually paid for by the government. When it isn't paid for by the government, it's paid for by a foundation, or in pharmaceuticals by a corporation, that is developing a drug. The people who vet the research are all paid by their respective universities. All the journal does is distribute it. Yet they charge way more per page than anyone else who just distributes other people's writing. Sunglass industry. As a chef slash owner, I would say delivery services like Grubhub. They take 30% of the sale leaving the restaurant with basically zero dollars in profit. And their customer support is a joke. It's like they hate us. Fuck them. Never again. Not an industry, but higher academia is badly broken. Some of the smartest people are some of the most badly exploited. 
Old tenured professors limit the number of faculty many departments can have, forcing people to work as postdocs forever, effectively doing all the work the prof should be doing in the first place. Meager pay and long hours, plus constant pressure, makes postdocs some of the most depressed people. The grad students are no better either. A lot of the times grad students don't complain about ill-treatment, harassment and outright bullying as they don't want to jeopardize their prospects of graduating. If you're a foreigner, this situation becomes even worse, whether you've a grad student or a postdoctoral researcher. Dog boarding slash daycare. Not shady in the Mayfair sense, but you'd be surprised at some of the places I've worked at. Aggressive dogs don't get kicked out, very dishonest about what goes on behind the scenes, not enough staff to care for the number of dogs. My coworkers at my current job have had the same experience as well. We were all very happy to find a place that actually treats the dogs as the hash one priority. Most people are just in it for the money, which is funny cause there isn't much money in the dog industry. The textbook industry. Pearson is the fucking mafia.